If you can't already tell, I'm very happy to be here tonight. <laughs> Baptisms hold a really special place in my heart. I just, I just love baptisms. They're a celebration of what God has done in a person's life. And it's always so beautiful to see how God has worked uniquely in a person's life, often coming from a huge variety of different backgrounds. And I'm sure we're going to bear a testimony to that tonight, to hear all the different ways that God has worked throughout a person's years on earth and has uh, slowly, you know, just, just... I don't know, just change their journey here and there to bring them to the place they are tonight. And it's also a public declaration that a person stands with Christ, under Christ, united, uh, belonging to Christ. And what a great thing to tell the world. What a proud moment it is to be able to tell the world, I belong to Jesus Christ. What a great thing. And the testimonies that usually accompany baptisms and will tonight are so wonderful to hear. To hear how God works in such a variety of ways and means to bring people to himself and to call them in order to follow him. And baptisms just, uh, it, to me, it, it's, it's not about how and when, but it's just about that moment of, of public declaration. I've been privileged to be part of a good number of baptisms, even though I, I really haven't been a Christian for all that long. I've been able to baptize people who were very young, uh, who were you know, about 10, 11 years old. I've been able to baptize people who were in their 60s, which was a great, great privilege too. I've done it in a tank, just like this one, but also in a lake, in a river, in swimming pools. Uh, I've done it in winter, bear in mind, not Canadian winter, but outside in the ocean during winter. It was still really cold. And one of the craziest things I've, uh, baptisms I've been a part of is when I was in China, the city that I was in, uh, it was, I was a, a being a, sorry, a short-term missions trip there at one point, and there was, we were in this apartment, and one of the particular people that we were working with wanted to be baptized, and so we wanted to baptize them, but we, it was like very last minute, and we had to do it the night before we left, and so we had no access to, to any kind of pool, or, and there was no water nearby that we could really just go and hop in, um, so we decided to do it in the shower, and so we filled, up, we filled up a bucket full of water. And so as the, we went to the man, baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. And we just dipped the bucket of water on top of them. And just like wet them as much as we could with the water. But no matter how it is or how cold it is or wherever it was that happened, one thing that remained true throughout all of them is that it was joyful. It was really, really a joyful moment. And I want that to be true tonight. So when it comes to baptisms and, and where they come, please, your job tonight as the audience, when whoever it is comes out of the water it is your job to make as much noise as you possibly can in celebrating the wonderful step that they have taken in obedience I wanted to share a story with you tonight from Acts chapter 8 speaking of baptism uh, and it illustrates some wonderful truths about baptism for us uh, I'll be reading it. It's, it's a good long passage uh, but it's what a wonderful story Acts chapter 8 from verse 26 to verse 40 and this is about Philip, uh, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And this passage is a really wonderfully illustrative for what baptism is all about. Uh, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of uh, Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb before the shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, 
Who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that, that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took uh, Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at uh, uh, sorry, as sorry, I can never say this word, Azotus, and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This passage shows us a few key things we need to understand about baptism. Number one, who can be baptized? And what we see is the pattern of Scripture is that it is a believer who is baptized. It is someone who has made the conscious, mature decision to be a Christian, to follow Jesus Christ. And when we look at this passage, we see this is a man who was hungry, who was eager to hear the, the good news or have this pr prophecy explained to him, a prophecy which absolutely definitely speaks about Jesus Christ. And it's clear that though the text doesn't elaborate on it, that, that Philip was convinced this man had made a declaration of faith that he was ready, he believed in Jesus Christ. And that is all that is required. It is an immediate response. This man has been a Christian for at best a couple of hours. And it is right then that he is baptized. And what's good about knowing that is that it works against what I think is quite a common misconception in the Christian church today, that in order to be baptized, I need to, I need to achieve some level of spiritual maturity before I'm ready. Like it's a goal to attend. If you call Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you are ready. That is all that is required in order to be baptized. You could be a Christian for a couple hours and you are ready to be baptized. There is no wait required for you. And that's a wonderful thing to learn. Baptism is not uh, the measure of spiritual maturity at all. It is a symbolic picture of what Jesus Christ has done in our lives. Amen. The second thing that we learn is how to be baptized. And this is not as important, but what we see in the scripture is that it's a pattern of, of immersion, that they went down into the water. From what we can tell about the text is that you go down into the water, and actually the word baptism or baptismo means to be submerged. And so what we see here is that it's not a sprinkling or any other mode of baptism. It is full immersion baptism. Now, I want to say this is not very important. If you were baptized in a different tradition in which it was just a, so, a small amount of water on you, it is very valid. And I think that God will honor that still. But we see no sense in changing it from what we see in Scripture. The Scripture speaks of full immersion from the best from best we can tell, and so we would do the same thing. And also, it best illustrates the symbolism of what's being expressed here. And baptism is just that. It's symbolic. It doesn't do anything spiritually to you. It recognizes symbolically what already has been done spiritually in your life. So what happens in baptism is a person goes down underwater and then they are brought back up out of the water. The going down into water symbolizes the washing away of sin and the death of an old life. As you go down into the water, it symbolizes going down into death, into the grave. You die to your old self. And as you are raised back, it, again, the coming out of the water represents the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the raising to new life, that you got brought out of death into new life. And it makes sense that this would be the, the symbolism of it, given that it is a public declaration of your allegiance to Jesus Christ. You align yourself with Christ, Him who died on your behalf. And as the scriptures say it, in Romans 6, where we, which we read at the beginning of this passage, that we have died a death with Christ, and we have and will be raised to new life with Christ too. And it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that bear witness to it and agree with what's going on at this point. This is a glorious testimony. 
What a wonderful thing to celebrate, symbolically showing the world that I have died to my old self and I have been raised with Christ to new life. This passage also illustrates the joy of baptism too. This man is a eunuch. And if you don't know what that word means, it means that at some point in his life, he was castrated. Uh, he, he was castrated probably because he worked in very close proximity with the queen. Uh, and so in order to keep the queen safe, he wouldn't have been able to, to do anything to her, to molest her or any way like that. So he would have had to be castrated. But the thing about eunuchs is that according to the Jewish law up to that point, they were not allowed to have full fellowship in the temple worship, that they were restricted from full access to the temple. This man, though, was keenly interested in the Jewish faith. Though he comes from so far away, he is an affluent man who managed to, to use his means to come all the way to Jerusalem to purchase a, a, a scroll of the, the Jewish prophets. He was keenly interested in the, the, the Jewish faith, but he would not have been allowed to have full participation in temple worship. And so when he asks that question, a man who is hungry for God, hungry to know the truth, asks the question, so why shouldn't I be baptized? The answer that is given to him is nothing. You are fully welcome to be baptized. There is nothing that would restrict you from being baptized. A man who has been told repeatedly and even quite recently, no, you are not allowed to come close. You are not allowed to come near to God is now being told, you are, the doors have been flung open for all people, people like you, people from the far ends of the world, people from all shapes and sizes and backgrounds. The way is open for all. That is the joy of our salvation, that Christ has accomplished everything. That there is nothing that we need to do in order to earn any favor with God. There is nothing that restricts us from experiencing full relationship with God. That all people can come in. If you are ready to repent of your old life prior to knowing God and fully embrace the new life which is being offered to you, a new start. Who wouldn't want a new start? That is what's being offered here. And this is what we are celebrating today. People who have decided, I want that new life with God. And I am ready to take this step of obedience. Whatever was true of you before, whatever label that you carry with you, if you are a Christian here today, if you believe in Jesus Christ, those labels have no power to tell you who you are anymore. The most true thing about you is that you are beloved of God, that Jesus Christ died for you, that you are united with Him, and because of that, you carry the label, I am a new creation. I have been created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which my Father prepared for me in advance. That is who you are. You are the one who God loves. You are the one who Christ died for. No matter what this world has tried to do to put labels on you, none of them are as true about you as that because that is what God says about you. And because of that, it, nothing can be more true of you. So today we celebrate a new life that God has given us. Today we welcome people into the family of faith knowing that we are all brothers and sisters, baptized together, united together in Christ. And what a wonderful, wonderful love that God has shown us in doing this for us. So let us thank God now in prayer as we think of His love. Would you pray with me? God, what wonderful love You have shown to us, that You would clear the way that all would be able to come in and experience the joy of salvation would be able to experience your love fully. Thank you, Lord, that you have done it all, that we need to do nothing else but pray to you, to ask you to come in to our heart, that we accept you as the Lord of our life and as the Savior of our soul. We thank you so much, God. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.